Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're gonna convert this into this. So we have a place for this. That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smuggler's Room, the show where each week this chubby geek tries to build something ridiculous, pass on a few tips, and inspire you to build your own wild and crazy projects. Now, if your X-Wing got stuck in the mud, your droid was swallowed by a water slug, and your only companion is a green puppet who speaks in riddle, then you're gonna be glad you have the Smuggler's Room. So subscribe if you haven't already, forget the bell you will not, so notification C you will. Now I realize you may not all have access to an X-Carve to create the coasters, but you could also 3D print these. Or you could prep the files and send them to a company like Shapeco and have them print them. Or you could simply use a jigsaw or a bandsaw or some other tool to create your coaster design. The point is, as always, don't let the limitations of the tools you do or don't have prevent you from trying something like this. Now once these MDF sheets comes off the CNC, we have to pop them out sand them down, and seal them properly before we can mold them. For most of the coasters, we cut them out on the CNC, but I also wanted to use stencils on others. So the actual coaster design is smooth and flat. Then we cut out the stencil and put it on. The silicone in the mold will actually capture the shape it's very subtle, but I wanted to try it out. Now obviously our parts have to sit in something when you pour the mold on, otherwise it would spill all over the place. So we're going to use some foam core. Super inexpensive, quick to use, a little bit of hot glue, and you can build a box with it. Then you just super glue down the parts you're gonna mold and you're ready to go. Now I have a few tips for you when it comes to mold making. And the first is do your research. I'm gonna put a link below for a playlist from the Punish Props Academy, Bill and Brittany Duran. They have a huge comprehensive library when it comes to mold making. They'll take you through all the different types, the different processes, and really get you kind of a backbone of what you need. The second thing I'm gonna tell you is start small with something like this and make it a one part mold, which is what we're doing. It's the simplest and most straightforward type of mold making. And if the project is small enough, there's not that much risk of failure, which you're gonna have. I mess things up all the time. Just ask my wife. Now, mold making is not the cheapest thing to undertake, but don't let the cost deter you. I'm a huge fan of the Smooth On product, and they sell these trial kits at a lower price than buying the big jugs. We're using Mold Max 10, and in this case, I don't have to do any math to figure out the percentage. I'm mixing the whole container because I need a good amount. After you combine both parts, make sure you mix thoroughly. Don't forget your mold release. Now I don't have a degassing chamber, so I have to pour from high up to make sure all the air bubbles are released from the silicone. Now after letting the mold sit overnight on a perfectly level surface, you can demold. You can see the results. Some of my MDF was a little dirty, but you can also see the reveal from the stickers. For this project, we're cold casting, which means adding powders to the mold before the resin. We'll also tint the B side of the smooth cast resin so it doesn't dry white. These powders get everywhere and you don't wanna breathe that in. So make sure you wear a respirator. We did a lot of trial and error, but I found that using a makeup brush, dipping it into the powders and then slowly adding it seemed to cover everything the best and it you know, sort of minimized all the glitter in the house. Once you get both A and B poured, you add your tint to the B side of the resin. Mix it thoroughly, and then you can combine both A and B together and mix again. It seems really dark now as you pour it in, but it will lighten by the time it sets up. You wanna pour as close to the corner as possible so that you don't displace your powders. The 
The resin itself kicks pretty fast, so we're able to demold fairly quickly. And I'm a little impatient. I think I'm gonna be doing cold casting a lot. The result is really cool. And when you pop them free of the mold, you're basically done. So we're pretty excited about how these turned out. And we hope you find some value and inspiration in this episode that you're gonna run out there, buy some silicone, resin, and start molding and casting your own products. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching. The support has been awesome, and we're so happy to have you here. And so, until next time, something you would keep building, out of nothing you will. Right? And they sell these trier kit. And they sell these tr at a lower price than buying the big... <laughs> and they sell these trial kits 